Getting strategy right is a critical issue for all organisations. In the for-profit sector, we can point to organisations like Apple and Woolworths and look at their sustained period of outperformance due to carefully executing strategies, making investments and making the right actions. But also in not-for-profit sector and government, we can also see successful strategy in action. Fred Hollows Foundation, for example, is an organisation that's done extremely well through a carefully executed strategy. Brisbane City Council as well in preparing for future challenges, using scenario planning and driving those into actions has also been a great example of good strategy in action. We are most vulnerable when we are most successful. That's when we're most reluctant to make changes. Nothing's wrong, we're doing everything right, we don't need to change. And the, that, that example of the tours of India is a great example of making the decision to make changes when you're at the top of your game and that's hard to do. What links these examples of successful strategies are really four key themes of the strategy process and this is what we really focus on at the UQ Business School Strategy in Action course. These are making sense, making choices, making it happen and then making changes. Making sense is about understanding the environment that we're operating in. So often businesses need to think more broadly in terms of what are the long-term changes that are going to affect their environment. Organisations are continually affected by changes in demographics, changes due to globalisation, changes in technology, and these are always throwing up opportunities and throwing in threats for all business. When we're scanning the environment and looking for threats and opportunities, we need to be really careful about putting our faith in making predictions. Uh, the future is always uncertain. Uh, a classic example of this is the case study we use in the course, Rio Tinto with the Alcan takeover. Alcan was a great business uh, in a carbon constrained future, being, having aluminium produced by hydroelectricity is a good idea. But what Rio Tinto didn't see coming was the global financial crisis. They had a lot of debt, uh, that debt became very expensive and the price of aluminium collapsed. So when we're scanning the environment, we need to be a little bit sceptical about our predictions and build in a margin for error. The making choices part of strategy that we talk about is all about recognising the trade-offs. We need to have a consistent strategy. If we choose to do one thing in business, it usually means that we have to do things that fit with that. Now, we start to constrain what we do. But integrated strategy is all about discipline and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So if we look at Woolworths, for example, you know, we can see Woolworths in the shop fronts, but really at the heart of Woolworths is logistics and economies of scale. The bigger the Woolworths gets, the lower its costs become. Now, it's highly unlikely that you're going to see Woolworths move into restaurants. It just doesn't fit. It's not a scale economy business driven by logistics. Instead, what we see with Woolworths is you know, shop fronts like Dick Smith, Big W, uh, Liquor, for example, BWS, and in the future, as a growth option, we might even see pharma pharmacies being rolled into Woolworths, subject to deregulation, of course. The framework we use for trying to put those choices together in an integrated way is a diamond model, all based around a fundamental economic logic of the company. So in the Woolworths case, for example, it's economies of scale. For another company, for example, like Apple, it's about having a competitive advantage in a brand and design and then translating that across different businesses, iTunes, iPods, etc. So when we look at this model, it's really important to understand the fit and the consistency. If we're based on an economic logic of scale economies, we need to choose the arenas, the marketplace, which is big enough to sustain those. We also need to think about our differentiators what makes us different and how that fits in with the model. Staging, how quickly can we expand? Where should we go to? And finally, our vehicles, what form of organisation? Do alliances suit our model, joint ventures, or do we just grow organically? But at the heart of this is the fact that everything needs to fit together for an integrated strategy. If we have one piece out of alignment, we end up with problems. 80% of strategies actually fail because of the execution problem. So actually putting the rubber on the road is where the problems really start to happen. And at UQ Business School we have a strong focus on the execution of strategy. Now the final part 
is making changes. And we've really got to recognise that the future is uncertain. No, no plan is perfect. And sometimes being able to make adjustments and respond to changes is more important than trying to generate the perfect plan. A lot of industries, purely through the, the structure of these industries, are tough to compete in. They're characterised by intense rivalry and fairly low levels of profitability. But even in these industries, we see organisations with good strategy coming out in front. Often it's the case of organisations trying to understand how can they defend a niche in that really tough industry. They need to find ways where they can sort of raise the barriers to entry so you know, their competitors will struggle to compete against them. They need to find ways to reduce the bargaining power of their customers. So a fantastic brand, for example, or a superior service. It really takes a lot of leadership to keep trying and keep pushing and keep pushing. Because the end point, if you like your physics, is entropy, is chaos, is disorder. Strategy is a continual fight against disorder. Organisations need to see strategy as a process, not just a plan that sits on the shelf or a weekend away at a, at a retreat. We could have a lot of great plans, a lot of great ideas, but businesses continually struggle to translate these into changes in how the business works. Organisations that see strategy as an ongoing process of analysing, learning, making adjustments, engaging staff will be successful. Mm -hmm.